Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, wanted to just real quick come back to the subject I talked to you about uh, yesterday on Hosea chapter 7. I know this was a shocker for many of you, as was for me. <laughs> let's, let's just face it. Uh, no different for you than for me, right? Strangers have devoured his strength, right? Ephraim, right? We're already in Ephraim. He, he mixeth himself with the peoples. Ephraim has become a cake and not turned. Does use the word cake, uga, right? Strangers have devoured his strength. The zarim, the strangers. Uh, another way that can be translated as aliens. And when I, and by the way, anytime I use the word alien, I always think of fallen angels. It's really demonic entities is what we're talking about. We're not talking about, uh, you, know, you know, regardless of the form they take upon themselves makes no difference. That doesn't, that doesn't mean anything, the forms that they take. The serpent in the Garden of Eden would be an alien. Uh, he was... Of course, we know he was the uh, a beast as the scripture describes him, but he's cursed to go on his belly. So he obviously was not on his belly when he came into the Garden of Eden. It's something a lot of people maybe don't even think about. Uh, you know, what was he? I, I don't know, but, but he's reptilian. You know, I just, when I was sharing the in the video I did yesterday, uh, there was one particular image from that collection of images that the that the uh, uh, forget the guy's name Sir Henry I believe was his name there that he had that he had actually done let me just see if we can pull that up real quick um, and Sir Henry when he is fire uh, here we go right there that's I'm actually in that very spot let me see if I show it I don't even know if I show it or not but one of the images that he shows there. Uh, is actually, there's Sir Henry right there. Um, oh gosh, no, I don't, I don't think I show it. I don't. It's the Egyptian one where they show in the Egyptian hieroglyphics. Uh, may, maybe if I'd pull it up, I could pull it up and show you there. The Egyptian, Egyptian uh, hiero, and I may spell this wrong, glyphics. Uh, gosh, how do you spell that? G U L Y P H I. So just bear with me. Hieroglyphics, and and we'll call it the light bulb. That that's the one. The one that looks like a light bulb, right? And those hieroglyphics. There we go, right there. This one. Well, and here it is. In fact, it's right there. This is. I'm just wondering. Do all of these images show that? And let's just see. Um, because the one I'm thinking about specifically is the, this one here, you know, where you've got this obvious, a reptilian type of creature. You know, is this really true? Or is this, uh, <laughs> I mean, it blows me away, right? So you got this lizard-like head, but a physical, like a man body, but has a tail on it. And that's the way the reptilians have been described to me. And of course, that's kind of the way I kind of picture when you think about the serpent, initially, maybe he looked more along that, those lines there. Um, and again, uh, yeah, 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 even this one here, and again, I don't know if that's really... Uh, one of the, the same there, but you can still see the lizard head guy there. You know, um, I wish I knew for sure that we had one that's there in Egypt where we can see that. We see this one here. Now, that one obviously is in the uh, inside of the, the, the tombs there. That's what I'd like to see as, as far as this other one. Does it actually really show this or depict See, this one here shows the depiction of that character there. You can't quite see it, but you can still tell that that character is still in it. Um, but there's more than one style of that type hieroglyphic there. So, uh, don't know the answer to it. 
Nonetheless, though, uh, the point that I wanted to make in, in sharing these things with you, though, is that when we look at biblical evidence, someone had shared with me in the comments, Revelation 16, you know, because you have the unclean spirit like frogs uh, that come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of a false prophet. So again, they were sharing creatures that, you know, biblically kind of odd. Now, these are spirits, unclean spirits that are like frogs. Again, a reptilian type of spirit, but it's the same type of spirit that is upon the, uh, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. It says, for they are spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth into the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And even that is provocative in itself. Blessed is he that watcheth and keeps his garments. You see, this is what happened to Adam and Eve with the first round of a reptilian entity uh, that had came to them. The serpent in the Garden of Eden. So when we see the serpent in the Garden of Eden, what happens when we read that account there? And the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. And the serpent says to the woman, lo mot, tamiton, or tamutan, excuse me, tamutan, you, you, you will not die. For God does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as God, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and she gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. That's interesting. They knew they were naked. And at the same time, here we are dealing in the last days, and God is warning about three unclean spirits like frogs, again, a reptilian type creature. But he warns us, behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. You see, when you partake of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you end up naked. You lose your garments. And those three unclean spirits like frogs, they are going to do what? They're restoring back the law. For the Gentiles, you'll have the Noahide laws, the seven Noahide laws. For Jewish people, whether you're secular or not, you'll have 613 mitzvot, or 613 laws to keep. Hmm. And because you go under the law, yes, you will know good and evil. That's what's interesting. You will know good and evil, but you will end up like Adam and Eve. You will realize you are naked because you will have lost your garments. You see, Adam and Eve were not clothed the way they were in physical form like that. That's why they realized they were naked. Whether they had already been naked and were blind to their nakedness or not, I don't know the answer to that. But clearly the garment they were given initially didn't make them naked. And so once again, blessed is he that watches and keeps his garments, 
lest he walks naked. And I just find that fascinating that you're dealing with another reptilian entity. This time it's a spirit like a frog and he's anointing the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. And he's going to do miracles, go forth into all the kings of the earth of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. So that is just fascinating, right? Then you have 2 Corinthians, another one here. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so, that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. But we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. I love that right there, because see, the tree of life, if we partake of the tree of life, then we become clothed. And our garment is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because what you are, the temple of God. Another one as well. Uh, and I'm just kind of, I want to share some things with you. Before I do Isaiah 27, we'll go back to Hosea, what I mentioned to you yesterday. And this is where I said, you know, I I, it's just a conjecture. I, I don't say it as a doctrine. It just seems to be interesting because it doesn't use the word gray hairs. If you go to Leviticus, for example, and we look here in Leviticus chapter 13, but if the priests look on it and behold, there be no white hairs therein and it be not lower than the skin, but the dim, then the priest shall shut him up seven days and it spread abroad in the skin. Then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a plague. Um, and even up here, uh, either talking about a boil that would, that would appear on the skin, but it also is talking about the hair and the color of hair. Uh, the reason why I bring this out is because like here, you have white hairs there in, which right here, se'ad, uh, se'ad is the word for hair, se'ad levan, okay, white hairs. So when you're speaking of hair and a color, it's generally going to be together in the Hebrew language, uh, or even if it's a, a part. Now, you don't really have any place, uh, I think there's one place when it talks about Esau being born that he was uh, uh, hairy all over, red uh, as well. And again, you have the same thing. You do have it, but it doesn't specifically sp speak about his head, but just hairy all over. But it does have se'ad, and of course the fact that it's red. In this case here, the white hairs therein. Uh, again, you have it up here in verse 20. Um, and uh, uh, Again, you have, there you have it right here. There's the root of it right there. Se'ar right there. And Levan, the word white over here. But when you go back into Hosea, and it says gray hairs are here and there upon him, we should have the color gray and the word hair. If it's literally talking about his real hair, Se'ar, in the context of the sentence, but you don't. There is no se'ad anywhere in there, okay? So when you look over here and you see this word right here, shin ein resh, or sin ein resh in this case, even though it looks like a shin, it's, it's got the s sound instead of a sh sound. Se'ad, se'ad levan, white hair. Se'ad is the key word that we're looking at. You don't have Sheen Ein Resh anywhere in sentence number nine, all right? Especially with the word gray, Seba, okay? Or Seba, Seba. Gam Seba Zaraka Bo, which is, okay, also grays are here and there upon him. 
So the point that I made yesterday is it did not make any sense to call it gray hairs in real, and especially when the fact Ephraim, he is mixed with the peoples. In other words, he's mingled in amongst them. He's, uh, this hybridization is what it is. Ephraim has become a cake and not turned. Strangers have devoured his strength and he knows it not. So the strangers that he's mixed himself into, they've sucked away his strength. Then you would have, yea, gray hairs are here and there upon him and he knows it not. That makes absolutely no sense. Gray hairs are upon him? When it just talks about strangers have devoured his strength? No, that makes no sense at all. But if you look at it in the regards of Gamsibazarakabo, okay, and the gray and also the grays are upon him. They're here and there. They're here and there upon him. And he doesn't know it. That makes more sense. That's kind of like even with the Revelation 13, those three unclean spirits like frogs. Those three unclean spirit like frogs, they're the ones that come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast and the false prophet. Will they even know that they're there? They're upon them. They're anointing them. They're spirits of devils anointing them to do miracles. And they're going to go before the kings of the whole world and they're going to create, they're going to cause this battle to come forth. I don't know if they even know it. I don't even know if the dragon and the beast and the false prophet are going to even know it. Even though we read that it's a dragon out of the mouth of the dragon and the beast, it doesn't mean that for what we see, we may only see them as human beings. But one's a dragon, a serpent in other words, a beast. Doesn't specify what type of beast other than a venomous beast and the false prophet. And then if you take that and you couple that with what Jesus said here about the Pharisees in his day, they said, if, woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets, garnish the sepulchers of the righteous, and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have partaken with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, you be witnesses unto yourselves that you are the children of them which killed the prophets. Sounds a lot like Ephraim, doesn't it? He's mingled in amongst them. He's mixed in with the, what? The strangers, the Zarim. He's mingled in among them. And the grays are here and there, and he doesn't even know it. Wherefore be ye witnesses unto yourselves, you are the children of them that killed the prophets, fill you up the measure of your fathers. You serpents, you generation of vipers. How can you escape the damnation of hell? And we know the Hebrew Matthew literally says serpents, seed of vipers. That mingled bloodline that happened back in Babylon. Ephraim though, or the house of Israel, had mingled his seed already long before Judah ever did it. Judah did it while he was down in Babylon. Ephraim did it before they even got there. Before they ever left the country, they were already mingling their seed. The only difference is that Jesus identifies that they are serpents. They didn't look like snakes. Had they looked like snakes, the children of Israel had been scared to death and fled from before their faces. But he didn't look like snakes. So he goes back here. Wherefore I send to you prophets and wise men and scribes, some of them she shall kill and crucify, some of them shall you scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous bloodshed upon the earth 
from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Micaiah, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. Now he puts that bloodshed all the way back to the beginning with Cain and Abel. And again, we know Genesis, we had exactly that. We had the serpent, the Nachash, Hanachash, coming along, saying to the woman, you shall not surely die. Boy, she ever found out she was naked after that. And then God has warned us the same. He's warned us the same. If so be that we clothe, we shall not be found naked. And how would that happen? That's interesting. For we know that our earthly house of this tabernacle, which is dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. For we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. So you could get that body beforehand. If so, that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan in being, bur being burdened. Not for that will we be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. We want to partake of the tree of life, Jesus Christ. So that we not be naked. If so be that, if, if so be that being clothed, we shall be found naked. Hmm. So we can actually be clothed before even leaving this life here. And we know that because when you get to Revelation and we're starting to fight as well, just like Adam and Eve had to fight in the Garden of Eden, they were only dealing with one serpent. Now we have three reptilian spirits like frogs that enter into a dragon, a beast, and the false prophet they're going to do miracles and wonders. And then we're warned. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Oh, they'll know. They'll know if you're naked, all right. They'll know if you don't truly, if you're not truly clothed, by Jesus Christ, the tree of life. And you want to talk about some troubles. You think that, Jose, that Ephraim had it bad? See, Ephraim had it bad. He mixed himself with the peoples. He became a cake not turned. Burnt on one side, in other words. Strangers, the Zarim, devoured his strength. And he didn't know it. And the grays, they were here and there upon him. And he didn't know that either. And what's interesting is there's so much conjecture been made by people in the know that there's more control by those entities in what goes on in this life than we would really care to believe. I guarantee you one thing, we may not have seen it yet, but I do believe that that's going to be right what comes down to those three unclean spirits, spirits like frogs. Remember I told you guys on our Patreon channel how that there are some entities, one of them being an aqua type of entity. There comes you a little bit of a frog-like idea, right? They're coming back. And they're going to try to bring about a new world order with a one world religion. They're going to try to tell you the Jews were not guilty for the blood of Jesus Christ after all. It was somebody else altogether. Wow, sounds like three unclean spirits like frogs to me. 
And so when we talk about whether it be greys or reptilians or whatever they may be, Nordics, Palladians, I don't care what name they talk about, they're devils. Flat out devils. Anyway, thank you for listening. Thank you for your support of this broadcast. Uh, do be in prayer for, for me today. I've got to go into the hospital to have some tests run. Got some issues there going on that they need to check out. So if you would uh, pray for us, pray for the family here. Uh, thank you for your support as well. And, um, and that's going to be one of those self-pay things. So I'm not looking forward to that. Anyway. God bless you, and we love you. Our website right above my head there is IsraeliNewsLive.org, and uh, you can support either way by mail or uh, right there online. And, uh, and listen, those of you that may not know about the video that you see right here on my website, definitely watch this. I actually shared this uh, with uh, artists as well as uh, Mikovits and... Uh, Bron, uh, McCullough, Cole, I'm just saying last names right now. Uh, that way it doesn't really pick up as far as that, like in a little group text there together. And uh, the one you see pictured there promised me that he would watch this. Uh, I really want the group there to take a serious look at what's going on. So God bless you. Thank you for all of, uh, your help and your support. And... Uh, Look forward to sharing more things with you. And again, uh, after I get through this testing I got to go through today, uh, hopefully I can share two with you. If, we, if I get back early enough, I'm going to work on it on Planet X over on Patreon. God bless you and thank you for listening.